Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series on the life divine with our beloved Ranga. We are now in chapter four, the divine and the undivine. We'll read the quotations and then we'll read the first para. The divine and the undivine. The seer, the thinker, the self-existent who becomes everywhere has ordered perfectly all things from ears sempiternal. <clears throat> Many purified by knowledge have come to my state of being. They have reached likeness in their law of being to me. From the Gita. Know that for the Brahman and not this which men cherish here. From the Kena Upanishad. <clears throat> One controlling inner self of all beings. As the sun, the eye of the world is not touched by the external faults of vision. So this inner self in beings is not touched by the sorrow of the world. Katha Upanishad. The Lord abides in the heart of all beings. Again from the Gita. <clears throat> the universe is a manifestation of an infinite and eternal all existence. The divine being dwells in all that is. We ourselves are that in ourself, in our own deepest being our soul, the secret indwelling psychic entity, is a portion of the divine consciousness and essence. This is the view we have taken of our existence. But at the same time, we speak of a divine life as a culmination of an evolutionary process and the use of the phrase implies that our present life is undivine and all the life too that is below us. At the first glance, this looks like a self-contradiction. Instead of making a distinction between the divine life we aspire for and a present undivine existence, it would be more logical to speak of an ascent from level to higher level of a divine manifestation. It may be admitted that essentially, if we look at the inner reality alone and discount the suggestions of the outer figure, such might be the nature of the evolution, the change we have to undergo in nature. So it would appear perhaps to the impartial eye of a universal vision untroubled by our dualities of knowledge and ignorance, good and evil, happiness and suffering, and participating in the untrammeled consciousness and delight of such is Ananda. And yet, from the practical and relative point of view, as distinguished from an essential vision, the distinction between the divine and the undivine has an insistent value, a very pressing significance. This, then, is an aspect of the problem which it is necessary to bring into the light and assess its true importance. So, on the one hand, there are philosophies which say that everything is not the divine. There is a Manichaean theory, then there is the other theory that there is a division between spirit and matter. Um, in a sense, Buddhism, Mayavada, all these philosophies, even Christianity, I think you have the divine and the uh, Antichrist. So all these ideas are there. But the Vedanta is very, very clear that there is only one ultimate reality and that is Satchidananda. So everything, there is nothing else except Satchidananda. Even at the lowest level, it is a divine. But that divine has hidden himself. There is a gradation. At the highest level, you have the pure divine who is undisguised. 
and he is playing a game with himself he has disguised himself he has descended into the opposite of himself and he is seeking himself back from the lowest level he is again going back to the higher level and how is he playing this game he is playing it through you through you through me through all the others so this is the advaita philosophy so essentially we have to see this as a game of the divine yes there is no other way to view it but it's very difficult to see that when you are suffering deeply okay <laughs> you have cancer you have cholera you have suffering you have death so how do you account for this divinity here that's a problem he is going to discuss okay so <clears throat> the divine is here but he is hiding behind the forms he creates forms in his manifestation and is hiding behind the forms he is there here but he is hidden he is disguised so himself. how do you uh, show us the difference in the veils and the forms the form is a veil okay the form itself is a veil like clothing if you want okay so we have a body which is a veil we have a vital which is a veil we have a mind which is a veil and the deep deep inside ourselves is a psychic being which is a representative of the divine essentially it's the same but it's a portion and like the gita says they have quoted ansha sanatana it is a portion of the divine that's a whole soul and this is the individual soul but we also have veils of family environment Are there is the veils? individual and there is the universal so what you are talking about is the individual even if individuals are not if you are not there the universe this gradation is there from top to bottom we are participating in this and we are wherever we are we are participating in that portion of the universal consciousness at the material level we are material our consciousness can go to the vital level mental level it can go to the spiritual levels it can go to the super mental level but the veils will be there always okay so the universe is a manifestation of an infinite and eternal all existence okay so the manifestation we have to understand what is a manifestation <clears throat> so a poet has got his poem in his mind but it is unmanifested when she puts it down into form with paper and ink with very clear material forms then it is manifest it's for others to see so this is manifestation when it is made available to the senses in man that's manifestation okay so so the physical world is a manifestation of the divine he has got the whole plan in his own mind but he manifests it materially here okay so and what is it manifestation of it's an infinite and eternal all existence infinite eternal all existence this is sachidananda he has not mentioned it here but that is sachidananda the divine being dwells in all that is all that exists so the divine being is there right from the highest level to the lowest level even in the and he uses very interesting words he the all existence is matter but it is subtlest of matter and when it comes down here it becomes the grossest of matter that is he uses the word matter so when he wants to you say all existence when he says he means substance at its subtlest the divine needs a substance to create the world everybody when i want to make something i need a substance so the divine has got this substance and what is that substance sachidananda it's a substance made up of subtlized matter consciousness force and also ananda and he is manifesting it and making it a material form so and so all existence subtlest matter substance subtle matter matter the grossest of substance this is these are the words he uses okay so this gradation is there now that gradation applies also to the divinity 
at the purest form and here it is there hiding but it is outwardly it's the most impure and the most gross okay so, <clears throat> the divine being dwells in all that is all that exists we ourselves are that in our self our deepest self in our own deepest being our soul the secret indwelling psychic entity he has used two words self and soul there should be no confusion between them the self is your own self you find that it is your own self individually but when you realize it you also see that it is cosmic so it is cosmic as well as individual but the psychic being is individual and the psychic being is the one that evolves it comes down into matter and evolves the self never evolves it is static it's at level 2 of the spiritual planes okay so he is using both the words that in our self in our deepest being our soul the secret indwelling psychic entity is a portion of the divine consciousness and essence now this is another thing essence we have to also understand the purest form of something is the essence mm -hmm. so the soul is the essence okay the body mind life is not the essence it is the veils and the coverings this is the view we have taken of our existence when he speaks of we he means the integral view the integral philosophy okay but at the same time we speak of a divine life as a culmination of an evolutionary process and the use of the phrase implies that our present life is undivine and all the life too that is below us what is below us the animal existence and the material existence so that's below us so everything is undivine at f at the first glance this looks like a self contradiction how can it be undivine and divine at the same time okay instead of making a distinction between the divine life we aspire for and the present undivine existence it would be more logical to speak of an ascent from level to higher level of a divine manifestation it may be admitted that essentially if we look at the inner reality alone and discount the suggestions of the outer figure which is outer figures matter life and mind these are the outer figures so discount them don't consider them consider only the inner the inner reality alone and discount the suggestions of the outer figure such might be the nature of the evolution the change we have to undergo in nature so so it would appear perhaps to the impartial eye of a universal vision not the individual vision universal vision untroubled by our dualities of knowledge and ignorance good and evil happiness and suffering and participating in the untrammeled consciousness and delight of sachidananda so if he was not subject like the individual soul to the veils of body mind life he would see the gradation in that way so you have to go from here to there so and yet from the practical and relative point of view as distinguished from the essential vision the distinction between the divine and the undivine has an insistent value a very pressing significance so even that has got a significance what seems to be suffering death perversion ignorance darkness this also has got a a purpose so what that purpose is we have to see pressing significance this then is an aspect of the problem which it is necessary to bring into the light and assess its true importance clear hmm. so we can go to the next para good the distinction between the divine and the undivine life is in fact identical with the root distinction between a life of knowledge lived in the self awareness and in the power of the light and a life of ignorance at any rate it so presents itself in a world 
that is slowly and with difficulty evolving out of an original in conscience all life that has still this in conscience for its basis is stamped with the mark of a radical imperfection for even if it is satisfied with its own type it's a satisfaction with something incomplete and inharmonious a patchwork of discords on the contrary even a purely mental or vital life might be perfect within its limits if it were based on a restricted but harmonious self power and self knowledge it is this bondage to a perpetual stamp of imperfection and disharmony that is the mark of the undivine a divine life on the contrary even if progressing from the little to the more would be at each stage harmonious in its principle and detail it would be a secure ground upon which freedom and perfection could naturally flower or grow towards their highest stature refine and expand into their most subtle opulence all imperfections all perfections have to be taken into view in our consideration of the difference between an undivine and a divine existence but ordinarily when we make the distinction we do it as human beings struggling under the pressure of life and the difficulties of our conduct amidst its immediate problems and perplexities most of all we are thinking of the distinction we are obliged to make between good and evil or of that along with its kindred problem of the duality the blend in us of happiness and suffering when we seek intellectually for a divine presence in things a divine origin of the world a divine government of its workings the presence of evil the insistence on suffering the large and enormous part offered to pain grief and affliction in the economy of nature are the cruel phenomena which baffle our reason and overcome the instinctive faith of mankind in such an origin and government or in an all seeing all determining and omnipresent divine immanence so other difficulties we could solve more easily and happily and make some shift to a better satis- to a better satisfied with the ready conclusiveness of our solutions but this standard of judgment is not sufficiently comprehensive and it is supported upon a too human point of view for a wider outlook evil and suffering appear only as a striking aspect <clears throat> they are not the whole defect not even the root of the matter the sum of the world's imperfections is not made up only of these two deficiencies there is more than the fall if fall there was of our spiritual or material being from good and from happiness or our nature's failure to overcome evil and suffering besides the deficiency of the ethical and hedonistic satisfactions demanded by our being the paucity of good and delight in our world existence there is also the deficiency of other divine degrees for knowledge truth beauty power unity are they too the stuff and elements of a divine life and these are given to us in a scanty and grudging measure yet all are in their absolute powers of the divine nature so more mainly he says that the undivine strikes us as the good and the suffering this is the 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 <coughs> normally what you would see the um uh, hedonistic and the uh, ethical the ethical deals with the good and the bad 
and the hedonistic suffers from the hedonistic uh, is dealing with the pleasure and pain. So it is pain and evil which are the most striking. He says that seem to be undivine. But there are other also things like. As he is saying, knowledge, truth, beauty, all these also we will have to consider, but they are seem to be less important than the moral view and the hedonistic view. That is the good and evil, and the delight, the happiness and suffering. So suffering and evil are the main problems in this view of divine divine thing. So it's a long para, <coughs> and we can do one thing. We'll get the overall picture. I'll read out the summary. Then we'll go into each phrase. Okay, so he's saying here the difference between divine and undivine can be said to be radically the same as between that of knowledge and ignorance. This is how it seems to be in a world. Emerging from the inconscience of matter, all that emerges from inconscience is stamped with imperfection, as long as inconscience is present in it. Even if such emerging stage is satisfied with its own status, still there is imperfection and incompleteness and lack of harmony. But life and mind could both be perfect if there was. Harmony of self-knowledge and self-power. All incompleteness and imperfection is a sign of the undivine. <clears throat> On the contrary, a divine life could be perfect at each stage if harmony would be the principle. At each stage, with harmony, freedom, and perfection, would grow to their potential and develop their subtlest opulence. In the consideration of divine and undivine, we have to consider imperfection and incompleteness in all fields. Man usually overstresses good and evil, happiness and suffering, but we have to look also at the imperfection and incompleteness of knowledge, truth, beauty, power, unity, because these are also elements of the divine nature. This is what he said in the para. So basically, we look at the good and evil, and think this is not divine, and happiness and suffering. <laughs> okay, so there is one thing that he has said earlier also. That is, there is a double ladder when we consider the involution and the evolution. The involution is starting from the purest. Such is Ananda. There is no incompleteness there. There is no defect there at all. So when it is creating these, these worlds are all in the involutionary world. They are pure planes of consciousness, matter, life. They are perfect in themselves. Now he has hinted at that in the involutionary scale. But this is a double ladder. He has used the word double ladder himself. Now there is the evolution. But in the evolution. You are starting from where? You are starting from the inconscient, and the inconscient is unconsciousness, ignorance, total darkness. So, if you are looking for something in darkness, you don't know where to go. So, you make a mistake. That is the problem. So, when you are starting from the inconscient, you don't know where you are going. You have to search. But there, you are starting from the light. So, those planes in the illusory are pure and perfect in themselves. But here, when you are going up. You are in ignorance, and you have to go step by step, step by step, slowly seeking, finding, and looking, and going up. It's a long process. And true of most of humanity, true of most of humanity. Yes, of course. But we do have some who, perhaps, have seen their past lives and didn't have to go. Yeah. Maybe no Lini, maybe Basu, maybe Pavitra. What you are saying is that each individual is at a different level. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Because in time, they are also being created. This is a problem also that many people have. Then, if souls are going on um, 
the population is going on increasing and they <laughs> from where are they coming so they the but remember also one thing that the divine has involved himself at the lowest and what is the lowest each atom is also divine and so but being divine it is not satisfied in to be imprisoned in darkness so it evolves so it wants to evolve so from the lowest level it is evolving and when it comes into the life element it is it can occupy a a condition where it is better than pure matter so it is gradually u- utilizing the forms that biology is creating and goes on so there is a biological evolution and there is a soul also which is growing and occupying these biological forms so both the forms are necessary okay so this is the so there is no problem because the, the souls are infinite to begin with from here and so each soul is going and depends on when you have been born and how it's an endless process in time there there is timelessness but here we have time and so each one is at a different level <laughs> It's very simple. Even if you take hundred people and do marathon race, all of them will be at different levels and reaching different times. So there's no problem. All won't reach at the same time. True. <laughs> so you spoke of humanity in different grades, and that's exactly it. the distinction between the divine and the undivine life is, in fact, identical with the root distinction. between life of knowledge lived in self awareness and in the power of the light and a light of igno- life of ignorance so now we have to know what is knowledge and ignorance so he is himself defining what is knowledge lived in self awareness you are when you know your soul you are in knowledge when you don't know your soul you are in ignorance he has defined it himself okay so <clears throat> lived in self awareness and in the power of the light you are in the power of the light here is only mental light but we have to have spiritual light so life of ignorance at any rate it so presents itself in a world that is slowly and with difficulty evolving out of an original in conscience okay so it's starting from here and because it is starting from in conscience darkness it is evolving slowly towards light but it is it's a struggle it's a long struggle and imperfection is a stamp that's what is going to tell you now all life that has still this inconscience for its basis is stamped with the mark of a radical imperfection radical imperfection because that's a root the inconscience is the root so however much it goes okay the inconscient has got a grip up to a certain point which point is that sri ramno says it goes right up to the overmind level even in the overmind level which is all seems to be all light the origin of ignorance starts from there so only in the supermind the inconscient has no power so this is the greatest thing that he is speaking about <coughs> okay <clears throat> so, so at any rate so it presents itself in the world that is slowly and with difficulty evolving out of an original inconscience all life that has this inconscience for its basis is stamped with the mark of a radical imperfection for even if it is satisfied with its own type okay as mother says the animal world is perfect in itself if you don't compare it below and above it's perfect it's harmonious and all the things that are there it is as it should be okay so but there is lack of harmony that's what it tells you See, that's what it's saying all life that no sorry um for even if it is satisfied with its own type okay it's a satisfaction with something incomplete and inharmonious a patchwork of discords so we have discords discords dualities okay so on the contrary 
even a purely mental and vital life might be perfect within its limits if it were based on a restricted but harmonious self power and self knowledge these worlds you find in the involutionary worlds in the downward planes of consciousness i read that sentence again on the contrary even a purely mental or vital life might be perfect within its limits if it were based on a restricted restricted but harmonious self power and self knowledge he is saying very interesting restricted so again that word we have to see carefully he says that when there is in the involutionary planes there is a diminution of light of power of consciousness but there is no distortion there is a diminution but there is no distortion when you start from here from the lower evolutionary there is a distortion so the double ladder that he speaks about coming down and going up so if you experience, if you go into the mental world everything is perfect there according to the rules of that world if you go into the life worlds there they are perfect within themselves there is no evolution there self satisfied they are satisfied with themselves he uses the word satisfied <clears throat> but when we are going up from here there is no satisfaction because there is no harmony and there are dualities at each level there is dissatisfaction if you are developed enough okay so so it is this bondage to a perpetual stamp of imperfection and disharmony that is the mark of the undivine a divine life on the contrary even if progressing from the little to the more would be at each stage harmonious in its principle and detail this is a supposition okay it would be a secure ground upon which freedom and perfection could naturally flower and grow towards their highest stature refine and expand into their most subtle opulence all imperfections all perfections have to be taken into account as have to be taken into view in our consideration of the difference between an undivine and a divine existence but ordinarily when we make the distinction we do it as human beings struggling under the pressure of life and the difficulties of our conduct amidst its immediate problems and perplexities so he's saying that if you look at it from the human point of view we are not going to solve the problem so you have to look at it from another angle <laughs> so most of all we are thinking of the distinction we are obliged to make between good and evil or of that along with its kindred problem of the duality the blendiness of happiness and suffering so he's saying they are the most striking for man most of all we are thinking of the distinction we are obliged to make between good and evil and happiness and suffering so if you want to use philosophical words good and evil morality ethics it's an ethical problem good and or if you want to the other one hedonism hedonism is the pursuit of happiness but happiness is not here there is suffering so this this is the most striking part the undivine strikes us as this evil and suffering okay so when we seek intellectually so intellectually you are seeking it as human beings he has told you human beings when we seek intellectually for a divine presence in things a divine origin of the world a divine government of its workings the presence of evil the insistence on suffering the large and enormous part played uh, sorry offered to pain grief and affliction in the economy of nature are the cruel phenomena which baffle our reason and overcome the instinctive faith of mankind in such an origin and government or in an all seeing all determining and omnipresent divine immanence 
he is talking of an instinctive faith in mankind. It starts even from the savage. Okay, there is an instinctive faith that there is a higher power which is there. Vague idea, but it's there. That gets shattered when you think of the pain and the suffering from the intellectual point of view. Okay, as human beings. other difficulties we could solve more easily and happily and make some shift to a better satisfied uh, sorry other difficulties we could solve more easily and happily and make some shift to be better satisfied not fully satisfied to be better satisfied with the ready conclusiveness of our solutions so, but this standard of judgment is not sufficiently comprehensive and it is supported upon a too human point of view <clears throat> for to a wider outlook evil and suffering appear only as a striking aspect they are not the whole defect not even the root of the matter the sum of the world's imperfections is not made up only of these two deficiencies there is more than the fall if fall there was the fall is used in the biblical story of the genesis adam and eve they fall as so i using the word fall if fall there was but then he, he conditions it if yeah, if, if fall, fall there, there was. was yes in one way you can think of a fall but there is really no fall because the divine is here <laughs> okay so, so if fall there was of our spiritual and material being from good and from happiness or our nature's failure to overcome evil and suffering besides the deficiency of the ethical and hedonistic satisfactions so ethical dealing with good and evil hedonistic dealing with happiness and suffering <clears throat> besides the deficiency of the ethical and hedonistic satisfactions demanded by our being the paucity paucity the scarcity the lack of good and delight in our world experience there is also the deficiency of other divine degrees for knowledge truth beauty power unity so interesting we see opposite of knowledge ignorance we see opposite of truth falsehood we see opposite of beauty ugliness we see opposite of power incapacity we see opposite of unity disharmony so this is what we see in the physical world are they too the stuff and elements of a divine life and these are given to us in a scanty and grudging measure very little yet all are in their absolute powers of the divine nature it is not possible then to limit the description of our and the world's undivine imperfection solely to moral evil or sensational suffering mm -hmm. there is more in the world enigma than their double problem for there they are only two strong results of a common principle it is a general principle of imperfection that we have to admit and consider if we look closely at this general imperfection we shall see that it consists first in a limitation in us of the divine elements which robs them of their divinity then in a various many branching distortion perversion a contrary turn a falsifying departure from some ideal truth of being to our minds which do not possess the truth but can conceive it this departure presents itself either as a state from which we have lapsed spiritually or as a possibility or promise which we cannot fulfill cannot realize because it exists only as an ideal there has been either a lapse of the inner spirit from a greater consciousness and knowledge delight love and beauty power and capacity harmony and good or else there is a failure of our struggling nature and impotence to achieve 
what we instinctively see to be divine and desirable. If we penetrate to the cause of the fall or the failure, we shall find that all proceeds from the one primal fact that our being, consciousness, force, experience of things represent not in their very self but in their surface pragmatic nature a principle or an effective phenomenon of division or rupture in the unity of the divine existence division this division becomes in its inevitable practical effect a limitation of the divine consciousness and knowledge the divine delight and beauty the divine power and capacity the divine harmony and good there is a limitation of completeness and wholeness a blindness in our vision of these things a lameness in our following of them in our experience of them a fragmentation a diminution of power and intensity a lowering of quality the mark of a descent from spiritual heights or else of a consciousness emerging from the insensible neutral monotone of the inconscious the intensities which are normal and natural on higher ranges are in us lost or toned down so as to harmonize with the blacks and the grays of our material existence there arises too by a secondary ulterior effect a perversion of these highest things in our limited mentality unconscious and wrong consciousness intervene ignorance covers our whole nature and by the misapplication or misdirection of an imperfect will and knowledge by automatic reactions of our diminished consciousness force and the inept poverty of our substance contradictions of the divine elements are formed incapacity inertia falsehood error pain and grief wrong doing discord and evil there is too always somewhere hidden in ourselves nursed in our recesses even when not overly felt in the conscious nature even when rejected by the parts of us which these things torture an attachment to this experience of division a clinging to the divided way of being which presents the excision of these unhappinesses or their rejection and removal for since the principle of consciousness force and ananda is at the root of all manifestation nothing can endure if it has not a will in our nature a sanction of the purusha a sustained pleasure in some part of the being even though it be a secret or a perverse pleasure to keep it in continuance so very big para but we won't have time to go through the whole uh, thing one by one so we'll have a overview i'll just summarize the what he is saying okay so in this third para so so in the third para what he is saying is like this the undivine aspect of our world cannot be limited to only moral evil and suffering and these can be physical sensational vital and mental sorry physical sensational vital and mental imperfection covers all other fields of life also knowledge delight love beauty power capacity harmony and good on a closer look the reason for this general imperfection comes because of the limitation of the divine qualities referred to above but the limitation also introduces distortion and perversity at a certain level let us note that limitation alone need not be distorted or perverse this contrary turn brings in 
falsehood. A fall from the divine has now produced the undivine. There seems to be two reasons for the state of human degradation. First, a fall from the heights of ideal truth, beauty, power, consciousness. Second, there is a failure on man's part to rise again. It is due to incapacity. Looking further deeper down, we find that division is the primal cause of all imperfection. This division is a superficial phenomena of the lower planes. On the heights, there is only oneness. Division brings in incompleteness, fragmentation and a diminution of everything. Next comes the secondary result of distortion and perversion. Ignorance fully covers the consciousness of all creatures. The human degraded condition results in ignorance, unconsciousness, suffering. Then another fact has to be noted. There is an attraction, attachment, a sanction to these limitations and gradations and degradations. Even when a part of our being rejects and refuses pain and evil, other parts of our being will then remain and continue. Other parts of our being will them, sorry, other parts of our being will them. There is something perverse in the vital which wants suffering. Okay. We will have to discuss that in great detail. It is very interesting. Okay. To remain and continue. This strange fact is due to the divine principle of consciousness force and ananda which makes manifestation possible because of its will and sanction. Nothing can continue to exist or come into existence without the sanction and approval of the Purusha. There is secret ananda in everything and it gets distorted. So this is the so, he has given you many reasons for this. But the main reason is division and limitation. Now, this is the thing. The other day we were discussing with uh, uh, Anmol and manifestation implies form. Form implies limitation. Limitation implies imperfection. So, the moment you want to manifest this is bound to happen. We will stop here today and take up this detail next time. Okay, sir.